Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we retouch underwater photos. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 66 of my Photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Remeli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, but right now I'm traveling through the US for a couple of weeks. I'll be in Florida and I'll be in Los Angeles and then back to Paris. Last week, I showed you how to be creative with presets. If you have not checked this episode, check it out. You will see it's pretty interesting because preset really can give you inspiration and put your photos in some curve or directions you would not expect. Plus, I released a new package with 60 preset last week and I made a new bundle where you can buy all my presets for a very good discount, a total of 120 presets. So check it out if you didn't get a chance to do it. This week, we are gonna retouch underwater photos. I have a friend who gave me a whole bunch of photos to retouch, and this is some of the before and after. That is the first photo, and this is a second photo. So let me show you how I retouch underwater photo. Before we get started, I just wanna show you something that uh, I created, which is the Photo Search Complete Package. What that is, is all the courses I've been doing for two, three years, all in one huge big package. Uh, so instead of $484, if you would have to buy everything, you get roughly 50% uh, and you can get everything at 270. But for that to work, when you check out, you have a discount code and you need to put the discount code called complete, as you can see here. This way you get, that's the only way you're gonna get that $270. Now this will be, uh, updated as I do new courses. It's like a complete package. Just, you know, you just buy everything I ever done. Now we are making a little promotion with a partner. Uh, if you buy this package by the end of this month, October, you will get for free shipped to you a USB key with all the uh, all my training on that USB key. It's a 16, 16 gigabytes USB key. We will ship it to you and all my videos, all my everything will be on there. Uh, I do that also because I just want to try if that works. Some people live in uh, areas where internet is very bad. So maybe getting a, a, you know, a USB key with everything can be worth it. But I only do it for people who actually buys the whole package. So right now we are doing a special promotion. It's free for anybody who buys that package by the end of this month. Voila. Okay guys, so a friend of mine who is a huge fan of uh, submarine and underwater photography uh, sent me a whole bunch of photos is asking me to uh, retouch them uh, for him. And I, um, unfortunately, I, I don't do underwater photography. I would love to, but I have troubles with my ears and I cannot go very deep under the water. So anyway, he doesn't have that problem. He's got a, so he has a chance to be able to go very deep and take some nice photos and i just want to show you how i retouch two of uh, his photos there's tons of them that i retouch and maybe it can inspire you on retouching underwater photo so this is the first one this photo was taken at 1 200 of a second at f6.3 so he's pretty good you know uh, iso 400 but it's pretty well exposed uh, so i don't think there's so much noise so let me press i to take that out and uh now, the, 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 the key point with underwater photo is the white balance. Now, there is a trick that I like to do. It doesn't work all the time, but I like to do, uh, and it works on this photo, is what I do is uh, the white balance, you know, I could go here and go to uh, daylight. You can just try, you know, daylight. It's pretty, uh, uh, it's actually warmer than what it was and cloudy, and it gets warmer and warmer shade, for example. Now, what, one thing that I do is I just take that and... Uh, one thing that you have, the problem we have with underwater photo is that they are very blue. So how we can take all the blue out? Well, you just take the picker and you click on the light blue and boom, it makes the whole photo very warm. And I kind of like that because I like this whole idea of making like a tropical photo. Now, of course, this became, uh, this is not blue anymore. So uh, that's fine. Uh, we need to, for that to be a bit blue. But, you know, this could be blue, you know, uh, this could be red, you know, in real life. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this, um, this filter. I'm going to put it on the side here and I'm just going to use this uh, 
to make it a bit more blue get some blues back here so that we have like a basically a color contrast between blue on the left and sort of reddish on the right okay um maybe add a bit of saturation no that's it that's about it so now that's i now that i did the white balance uh sort of uh, correction i can do my standard correction which is you know opening up the shadows and bring down the highlights and then pressing the alt key the alt key has to be pressed and then doing my white point uh so what is my white point the white point is when i go right and i see you know the whole thing is black and i see some red blue and green dots that appears that means that this point are 100 percent white i don't want too many so i stop you know i'm at plus 23 i stop until i see one and then i do the same thing with the blacks i press the alt key and i go left with the blacks but with the blacks i go a bit further down i want um some uh, points to be black like i don't stop when i start seeing some points i uh, i go a bit further than that see how much yellow there is that's how much i go okay and um maybe i'm gonna lower a bit the exposure and boost the contrast you know i like very contrasty photo boost some clarity uh and maybe some vibrance to make it even more pop now check this out this is the before um so one second this is the before and this is the after quite a change uh, and uh, actually it's funny because my friend told me that when i showed him the retouch i did he says well you're retouching the photo uh, like you would do it on a daylight uh, which is true now maybe i would frame that photo a bit different I, I think that this is a bit too much present so maybe i would do it something like this maybe get uh, yeah something like that maybe so we don't have so much attention on the foreground element but you know it's it's like nice colors we have the blue from the sea and we've got the yellow and the reds from uh from the stones i think it's kind of nice okay so that's one little trick another trick that's another nice photo that he took uh now on this one i'm not going to do the white balance yet i'm just going to open up the shadows look at this when you open up the shadows let's check this one out this one was taken at 100 iso mm, that's cool so now I'm, I'm gonna look in the shadows. Yeah, it's kind of a bit grainy because I don't think he's got a very, very recent camera. So it's a bit grainy there. So we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, I'm gonna bring down the highlights. Ooh. And then I'm gonna do my white point like we just did before. So option key, the white point. So I go right until I see the white points and then I back it down until I, I hardly see any. And same thing with the blacks. Okay, now the black you see, I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go further on the blacks so that's kind of cool okay now the white balance we could do the same thing but i'm not sure it's gonna yeah it's making it very red it, i'm i think i'm gonna go for auto or let's check daylight yeah daylight is kind of cool it's like very bluish maybe add a bit of magenta i like on this one i think it works at the fact that it's very bluish color now one of the key thing about that photo uh let me just do the finished here maybe add a bit of clarity oh yeah clarity is great and a bit of vibrance vibrance you can go down here and to camera calibration and um, see what uh, what camera landscape is going to do oh it's going to make it a lot more blue which can which is kind of cool uh, this camera calibration and uh, by the way and all the white balance option i showed you you can only see if you have a raw file i repeat you can only see if you have a raw file and you should when you take nice photos you should always shoot raw the only exception when i don't shoot raw is when i shoot sport you know when you shoot sport and you're doing like eight images a second if you shoot raw it's like <laughs> you're gonna need like very big hard disk you know so when you do like a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of photos or maybe like a wedding you know i, I don't know if i would everything shoot raw except when i'm doing like the shot of uh, the the bribes anyways so the guy was nice he shot raw and so i can really do some good uh, some good uh, correction on his photo so okay now that i took care of that uh, oh sorry i'm gonna get back to a landscape i want to make it yeah like this very blue atmosphere now camera calibration what that is is a different way um that lightroom will interpret the colors based on some very complex mathematic formula that's my understanding of it anyway so 
uh, I p landscape usually gives more saturation, and you know I'm crazy about saturation, but that's no secret. If you follow my podcast, you know that I got a problem with saturation. Anyway, so now let's continue. Um, I'm gonna boost the exposure on this. So I took a brush here. I I boost the exposure. Oh, I'm gonna make sure now. If you want to make sure that your your brush is completely at zero, you just press the Option key, and the the world effect becomes reset up oh, and I reset everything I just want the exposure and I'm gonna brush on the bubbles I want I want to make the um, the bubbles a bit more light especially you see there is like sort of ray uh, uh, rays now rays are is very important to make them even more present you know why because it's just nice but don't tell anyone rays are nice they, uh, maybe I went a bit further on this one. Now, if you want to see where you brush, you just put your mouse over the little pin and everywhere you brush is going to be red, you see? Okay, now I want to take this, this, this ray out. It's a bit too much. So I press the Option key. You just have to make sure that the pin is black and it's selected. And I can just erase. It becomes an eraser when you press the Option key. Okay, no, I went a bit too much on that ray. But... I want maybe a ray just like that, you know, and maybe even more. Yeah, something like that. Nice rays. Okay. Uh, last but not least, I uh, maybe I'm gonna c create a new brush, and I just want to add a bit of details here uh, on the rocks, maybe on some of the rocks. That could be that could be nice. Um, okay, a new brush, and uh, just adding a bit of details here on the bottom of the photo. Okay, kind of like that. That's cool. So check it out. Uh, if you if you go here, this is the brush panel. If I go here, this is before the brush, after the brush. You see how the brush makes the the whole photo. Brush, I think, is my biggest secret in Lightroom, because local correction is really what's going to make your photo special. If you think it's too much, you just can click the pin. You just check. Uh, you even go over it to see where you brushed, and you can just lower the value and your light rays will be more subtle okay um now on this one there is i know there is a lot of noise so i'm going to go into the noise slider so for that i'm going to first close the brush because we are done with the brush and i'm going to go into the noise which is basically here let's zoom in and let's look how much noise there is well it's not not much noise it's just a bit grainy so you know what when it's a bit grainy I usually go for 20. 20 is enough. So I have that, that formula. I take 100 and I take out the, the amount of noise that I took out. So 80. I'm going to go for 80 of sharpening. It's going to make the whole thing sharpen. And one thing which is very important and you should not forget is the masking. So the masking, you press the option key and you go to the right on the masking. And the whole idea is that anything which is like very flat colors like the water, you don't need to, we just need to sharpen the uh, the edges. So I go really like between 50 or 70. This way, uh, uh, because sharpening brings back noise. This way, anything which is an edge is sharpened. Anything which is like the water, which does not need sharpening, is not sharpened. Okay, now check it out. This is the before photo. This is the after. Isn't that beautiful? I really love the shots. So I just want to thank Mathieu Deboeuf, who is the French photographer, uh, who gave me these photos to retouch, because I would love to be able to do what he's doing under the water. Hope you like that, and it inspires you to take underwater photo because they give amazing results. Okay, let's get back to the studio. Okay, guys, I hope you like that tutorial and that you're going to check out my huge package with everything I've been doing so far. And uh, yeah, it's just a way of getting a good price on everything. Thank you very much for being here every week, guys. And I'll see you next week. Wow.